everybody. Welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Happy Saturday. Getting a little bit of a late start today. It's almost noon. Uh, was taking care of shipping this morning. I guess that's one thing, uh, this whole shelter-in-place jazz. I haven't been going up and cutting firewood. Uh, the, my friend's mom, who, who owns that property, uh, she's 81, 82. I don't want to take that risk that something might might accidentally head up there. So, consequently, I've been doing shipping on Saturday mornings so that uh, the mail will take it away in the afternoon, and you guys are getting parts uh, a little bit quicker in some cases. So, and then I let myself get distracted. Probably most of you guys heard uh, uh, Kenny Rogers died. I don't know about a week or so ago, and I. Kind of, you know, you start to reminisce a little bit. I grew up listening to, to Kenny Rogers, and I thought, oh, man, I haven't seen The Gambler in a long time. So, tell you what, you can find just damn near any movie that's worth a damn on Amazon. So, watch that this morning, and, you know, all I can say is they don't make them like they used to. Of course, that could apply to chainsaws, too. We're going to start taking a look at Richard's VI-922. And there's a little note with it. Hi Leon, I'm sending my 922 home light chainsaw. I'm the original owner, bought in 1973. I've not used it for 20 years as no one seems to be able to fix it. It has no spark and the fuel line is broken off and lying in the bottom of the tank. Please fix any other issues. Thanks Richard. So, 922, yeah. That's a model that was typically sold overseas. Or not over, or uh, excuse me, internationally, I should say. Canada counts. But uh, Richard's in Maine. So that would explain that. How it would end up in the United States. So, obviously, this bad boy is going to need some cleanup before I get too, oh, too involved in a repair. There we go. I'll tell you what. That's not a bad looking saw. Pretty darn good shape for its age. Pretty darn good shape indeed. Obviously it didn't come with a bucking spike. That's a, The fuel tank, the paint wears so badly on those when, uh, when you don't have a bucking spike. That's any restoration I do, you know, if I'm building one up, it's going to get a spike. Just even if I'm not going to use it much, if I do, I don't want that front of the tank all all jacked up. But this is a nice Survivor, 1973. That's pretty good looking saw. So this has, yep, that's standard 925 style fuel hose where you've got the one piece here, metal tube. So. You know, we watched that on uh, Chance's 925 last weekend. Do the same thing here. Uh, typical, the clutch cover screws have backed off at some point. Cut a hole in the, the cover. That's, again, fairly normal. So our other unknown issue of no spark, this would be a three-piece ignition system. Uh, it is a capacitive discharge, but you've got... Uh, a coil, a generator, and then a uh, transformer, essentially. And I'm going to have to figure out which one of those pieces is bad. I already have some ideas, just based on experience with these saws. The leads that go between the... Uh, oh... I'm going to probably mess this up between the pickup coil underneath the flywheel over to, I believe it's the generator, have a tendency to wobble and break. It was just kind of a defect. So going into this, that's going to be my thought as to where our problem is. Not even attempting to throw a spark at us. So, I think I'm going to get this thing disassembled a little bit, uh, get it hosed off, cleaned up, and ready to work on, and then we'll come back in when 
when they're yeah I think I'll go in there and get the flywheel off you guys have all seen that enough times but when I get in there and we start figuring out what the ignition problem is I'll come back okay so this isn't quite I mean it's it's dirty but it's it's clean enough under here I can tell I think I'm virtually certain somebody else has been in here at some point to try and fix it so what I'm using home light I have these posted on my website. They're service and repair manuals. They're comprehensive. They've got pretty much every model uh, at the time that that service manual was written. So I'm using edition 5, which is the most recent one that I have. And I just printed a few pages on the 925, 944, blah blah, you know, all those models. And we're going to go through step by step exactly how they say to test these components here and how to narrow it down. So, they start with an explanation and it's referred to HL84 for exploded view of the capacitor discharge magneto used on certain models. And here is HL84. So, we'll get our terminology right. Number three, our big round piece is the ignition module that's underneath the flywheel. Number seven is the generator coil. That's the smaller kind of odd shaped piece with the, the two legs here. And then number six is the high, excuse me, transformer coil. So module, generator, transformer. I will try to keep that right and not mix those up as we're going through this to uh, keep it as simple as possible. So the capacitor discharge magneto can be considered okay if spark will jump a 3 8 inch gap when turning ignition at engine speed or at cranking speed. If magneto fails to produce spark, service consists of locating and renewing an operative unit. No maintenance is necessary, blah 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 blah. Check magneto with volt ohm meter proceeds at, proceed as follows. All right, we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Remove the starter housing and disconnect wire from ignition switch. Check to be sure when the switch is in the on position, or there's no continuity through switch when in the on position to be sure a grounded ignition switch is not the cause of the problem. And pretty simple. We all check our, our switches, I hope. So I'm going to reach back here and disconnect this. I don't think that's the original terminal on there. Looks like a recrimp, but it's definitely an old one. So I've got the switch in the up on position. I'm just going to find a good ground. And we will see what we got infinite resistance which is exactly what we want to see we don't want the switch grounded if I turn it to off we have zero resistance okay the ignition switch is not the problem pretty much knew it wasn't gonna be that was too easy all right Caution, be sure that storage capacitor is discharged before touching connections. Flip the switch to off position or ground switch lead. Well, it was in the off position, so we know we're good there. Resistance through secondary, and in parentheses, high tension, winding of transformer coil should be 2400 to 2900 ohms, and resistance through primary winding should be 0.2 to 0.4 ohms. Connect ohm meter leads between high tension, uh, parentheses, spark plug, wire and ground, then between input terminal and ground. If transformer coil does not test within specifications, renew coil and recheck for spark at cranking speed. If magneto still does not produce spark, check generator as follows. Well, let's just start with checking this. So through the high tension lead means I need to get the spark plug tester out of here and I will get my probe that stuck right in there and we will go to ground. 
we'll see how many ohms of resistance we have. So this is in the thousand scale, so that's 2560, Oops. which is right within the range of 2400 to 2900 ohms. So that side is good. I'm going to unplug this input side. So when they say input side, that, that means it's a trigger lead, and that would be this one right here, the only other, good lord, somebody really crimped that on there tight. The only other connection, so to speak, is this ground lead, and that's all that's doing is, a, is grounding that, that coil. So, with this out of the way, our other value we were looking for was 0.2 to 0.4, so this should be very, very low. So 2.5, yeah, in the thousand scale. I think that's okay. Yeah, that should be right in that range. Okay, so we will go to the next step. Remove rotor flywheel, already done that. Disconnect lead from generator to generator terminal on module. So this part of the module is labeled GEN, generator. So we'll disconnect that. Now normally these have silicone over... And that lead kind of moves around. That can't be a great sign. Normally these have silicone over them to insulate as well as these three screws that mount it in place. When we get done and reassemble it, we will be putting that back in there. Okay, disconnect it and switch lead at ignition switch. Got it. Connect negative lead of ohm meter to ground wire from generator. So that's, well how the hell, the generator is this right here, ground lead, to ground wire from generator, I can't tell what, oh, okay, that's this right up here, it wraps back up right there because that's the other mounting leg and it's obviously ground wire okay ground wire from generator to positive lead of ohm meter to generator wire get this out that's the lead we just connect just disconnected get that where you guys can see it hold this in place Okay, so I'm reading nothing there. The ohmmeter should register showing continuity through generator. Reverse leads from ohmmeter. Ohmmeter should then show no continuity, infinite resistance through generator. Renew generator if continuity is noted with ohmmeter leads connected in both directions. Now I'm not reading continuity, period. Blip. That's strange. Hmm. Well, I'll be honest with you. At this point, I'm starting to suspect that. I think we're going to take that loose and just make sure that this generator lead is going where we think it is. Or at least where it should be. Okay. 
So again, the service manuals, I've got editions 1 through 5 posted on my website. They're at the bottom of the uh, service memos tab, which is under the, the parts diagrams uh, link. And you can print whatever's applicable to you, or just download the whole thing onto your computer, and then you can print it anytime you want. Oh, what a dummy. I know what I did wrong. I believe the kill switch mechanism is tied to the general. Let me just verify that. I think that's why they wanted us to disconnect it from the kill switch. I think that's how it shuts it off is grounding this. Make sure that I'm Yeah. Okay. So we'll do that test over again. And I don't think it needs to be bolted down to do it. So ground lead generator. That's a little more like it. Get a better connection here. Okay. Yep, that's infinite resistance essentially. These digital meters are kind of funny. But, remember what they said about it shouldn't read resistance from both directions. And boy, does it ever. So, provided this lead isn't shorted to ground, and it's not. shouldn't be reading it this direction. And I'm just going to double check this one more time. And we are. Okay. I think I have one of these generators in stock. I'm going to find it, get it out, get it set up in here, and we'll come back and see if that diagnosis process was right. Just okay, folks. So, I didn't have a new one in stock. I borrowed the one off of uh, the 955 project that I'm working on. And let me zoom out a little bit here. Obviously, I've put everything back together. I needed to to test it. We'll just get to the good part first. is a spark a guy can live with. So there's some nuances to these ignition systems. Let me get this out of the way. So this is the back plate from that 955 project that I've got going. This is the lead. Is that the generator lead? Yeah, from the module to the generator. So for the first thing, look at how bad this is. Now this is off a of mine, but you can see all that bare wire there. These things are known for rotting. So the module is sitting right here. It runs under, over, and then under again. Now that tab is broken. Should look like this, but it's meant to be a way to retain this and hold it tight so that it doesn't get caught up underneath the flywheel. Now here's the one that came off that saw. Look at this. This is just, all that insulation is destroyed. Completely destroyed. And that's right about where it would have been wrapping under there. So it's very possible, or at least possible, that there's nothing necessarily wrong with this other than that destroyed wiring. Now, I have repaired these. In fact, the one that's putting spark out right now is repaired. What I do, now the one I had was in worse shape 
it was cracked all over the place so I put a completely new section of lead in this one what I may be able to do as rotten as that is I don't know I may be able to go ahead and peel some more insulation back well that's easy cut it here slip some heat shrink tubing up over here and then redo it. I'll probably put a layer of electrical tape and then the heat shrink. The problem is if you make it too thick you can't get it to go underneath these little mounts here because you've got to have two wires in there. That one and that one. So this little lead is a common thing to go bad. And again, so is this one off of the generator. So, in any case, I'm getting spark there right now. I'll be honest with you, I'm tempted to clean this thing up and do a repair on this insulation and see if it will produce spark. If it will, that's been the whole problem all the stinking time. Wouldn't that be something? I think I guess what would make sense right now is to retest this with it off the saw using our test practice. So I don't waste a bunch of time trying to fig fix that. Connect the negative to the ground wire and the positive. So that's that. Where the hell is my meter? Because no, all of this stuff takes time. And it makes no sense to waste time. Okay, so that part is good. But we shouldn't read it, reverse the leads, and then show no continuity. Now we still show continuity, so this generator is bad. I'm not going to waste my time repairing it. So what I will do is I will order a new... Am I saying that right? Generator? I always mix these up. Yes, I'm going to order a new generator for this saw. But at least I can continue with repairs on it because getting the flywheel off and all of that is, is super simple. So that one's going to go where it belongs in the garbage can. And for the time being, mine will stay on the saw so that if I get everything else done, I can do a test run on it. How cool would that be? So, now that we've gotten that part taken care of, let's just go through this a little bit more and we'll see if there's anything else that's of any real importance that's going to be a pain in the neck to deal with. I kind of doubt it. I kind of think that anything else is going to be academic. Probably do a carb kit. Oh, whoop. I'm not a big fan of... Bar that shouldn't be that rough. There's something going on there. Whether it's the nut or the stud, I'm going to figure it out. Hmm. Yeah, I got this thing needs a bath. All right, that's already got the rim style sprocket on it, and actually the rim is in in fine shape. Clutch shoe clearance looks acceptable there. Got that 922 style, uh, international style muffler on there. Yeah, folks, this isn't going to take much. I think now is the time for me to get this bad boy cleaned up. Let's see what, what we got under the hood, so to speak. Older style air filter. It's in so so shape. Need to get a new seal right here. When you have no rubber up here on the stud mount, you gotta have the original would have been a cork gasket under there. I typically just use one of my rubber grommets and, and go with that. Man, this is clean. Okay. I'm going to get it cleaned up, check that carburetor. We may have a test run today.
Okay. Well, obviously, some progress was made. And obviously, the automatic oiler works just fine. Look at that puddle. Looks like the Exxon Valdez came through here. Okay, so obviously that generator coil worked. Uh, fuel hose went through the carburetor. It was surprisingly clean. Uh, Duckbill valves in both caps. The starter needed completely rebuilt. There was actually parts and pieces missing in there. The two spring shields had disintegrated and were gone. The bushing for the starter lock was missing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it uh, a lot smoother now, and it sounds positive. It, it's good. So, anyway, uh, oh hell, let's see if she'll restart. That's a good sign. That's a great sign, actually. I think this thing's about done. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I've still got to get a, a spit back. Uh, filter to put back on that air filter bracket and get that mounted in place. Uh, one thing, I, I hope it comes through on the video, I hope you guys were able to uh, hear it. When I'd rev it and hold the rev, you could hear that it wasn't really going cr uh, crazy on the RPMs. This is a governed carb. And when I'd let off the throttle, you know, that governor's got to have an instant to close so that it's not pumping extra fuel in there. That's why the idle would drop really low and then kind of ramp back up to where it was supposed to be. Uh, it was the extra fuel that was going in the engine. You close that throttle butterfly, it's got to burn that off. It's actually a tiny bit flooded at that point. So, anyway, from where we started to where we're at right now, Richard, I think we're moving in the right direction.